Hey Michael with X-Force PC, I want to talk to you about wireless technologies here in about the middle or early 2018. Um, the two most prominent wireless technologies now are wireless AC and wireless N, and you've probably heard those terms. Wireless N came out in 2009, wireless AC in 2013, but wireless AC is just now really becoming widely adopted just in the last one to two years, even though it's been out for, what is it, five years now. Um, they also, another difference here is uh, 5 gigahertz is what the wireless AC runs on. 2.4 and 5 gigahertz is supported on wireless N, and we'll talk about why that's important in a minute. Also, the theoretical maximum on these is 1300 on wireless AC, that's megabits per second, or a million bits per second, and then uh, 400 on wireless N. Now, for practical purposes, even if you're close to the router, you really need to just cut these numbers in half. Um, this is theoretical uh, on, in the most ideal possible uh, conditions. So if you're reasonably co close to the router, cut these in half and that's probably a more realistic speed for you. So one thing that matters with Wi-Fi is actually the number of antennas. So you see this wireless card here has two antennas, and this is a wireless AC card. Um, the wireless technology now uses something called MIMO, or multiple in, multiple out, where you can combine uh, multiple antennas to get the theoretical speed. For instance, a wireless in adapter with one antenna is capable of around 150 megabits of uh, data transfer rate. Now again, that's theoretical. You're probably going to get something more like, you know, 60 or depending on how close you are to the router, maybe less. And I know that's not even as fast as my home internet. My home internet speed is 110 megabit down. And so if I had a single antenna wireless in adapter, I'd be running, uh, you know, I'd probably get 50 or 60 megabit, which is like half the speed of my uh, broadband connection. Same holds true with wireless AC. Each antenna on wireless AC is good for around a theoretical maximum of around 400 megabit. And so this particular card is, is capable of a theoretical, since it's wireless AC with two antennas, of around 750 to 800 megabit. And again, cut that number around in half so maybe 300 to 350 megabit, and of course that does exceed my wireless, um, excuse me, my broadband connection at home, so this adapter would work well for me. Okay, so let's talk about 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz uh, frequencies. So let's say we have a house here. This is a top-down view of our house. I'm not going to bother drawing a bunch of walls in there. And let's say our router just happens to be located directly in the center of the house, just to make things more simplistic. Um, and our 5 gigahertz signal covers, you know, something like this. It's a big house, okay? And then let's say our 2.4 gigahertz frequency covers this much of the house. I think I mentioned earlier that 5.8 gigahertz, or maybe I didn't, doesn't travel as well as 2.4. Every barrier you throw up in front of it, in other words a wall, cuts that signal approximately in half. So after it goes through one wall, you're down to 50%, goes through another wall, you're down to 25%, goes through another wall, you might be down in like 10 or 15% signal. So um, that's why you see a smaller circle here than for the 2.4. Now, the 5 gigahertz is a faster band to use. So you might say, well, I want to use that all the time. Well, as you can see here, it may not always be appropriate. So let's say we have a computer and it's right here. It's just a desktop computer, doesn't move. The clear thing to do is to use the 5 gigahertz band there to communicate with the router, because 5 gigahertz is faster than 2.4. Now let's say we have uh, another computer and it's, it's like right here. Now as you can see, it's on the fringe of the two point, excuse me, the five gigahertz coverage. So you might say, well, it's inside the five gigahertz coverage. We should use that. It's faster. Not necessarily. A weak five gigahertz signal 
will be typically slower than a strong 2.4. Notice we'd have a strong 2.4 gigahertz signal here, but a very weak 5 gigahertz. So in this particular case, we'd probably be better off running 2.4 gigahertz because we're right on the fringe of that coverage. And then lastly, you know, anything out here or here, you're going to want to use the 2.4 gigahertz band simply so you will have signal because the 5 gigahertz simply doesn't reach that far. Now one way you can fit, fix this situation is with a whole home Wi-Fi system and I'll probably do a separate video on that just to talk about how those things work because they are pretty great.